Hello, everybody watching. My name is David Cash. I am the editor in chief of Daft Magazine, and I'm here with Mike Ruiz, who is one of my favorite photographers, and I am very pleased to be speaking with him here today. Uh, Mike, thank you again for taking the time. And uh, for anybody living under a rock, would you mind just doing a quick little intro of yourself and uh, yeah, what brings you to this uh, digital art space as well today? <clears throat> um, hey, um, well, um, thank you so much for having me. I'm happy to be here. Um, you actually brought me to this digital space. <clears throat> you um, introduced me to the um, the concept and the idea of, of NFTs, and I'm very excited about exploring that with you. And um, and and you know, I'm just I just want to find out as much as possible about them, and you know, and, and sort of interject some of my art into that space. Um, so yeah, so voila, that's why I'm here. <laughs> Amazing. I appreciate that. Um, so yeah, I, I also want to talk a little bit about your, you know, your work um, as the magazine is called Daft, um, which is a very funny word, but it's also talking about decentralized art, fashion and technology. So it's also kind of an acronym, um, as a lot of things are in this space. And uh, in the publication, we really want to talk about the creative process and highlight um, what goes into the output. Right, because a lot of people um, may be intimidated when they see the final product. Um, it may seem unachievable, but I think something that is really reassuring is almost like the representation of the process for artists. You can see how it's done. That's why BTS content I feel like is always so popular because people really are just interested to see like how that happens. Um, so yeah, that's that's really the crux of what our publication is about and uh, what we'd love to talk with you about today. So in the spirit of that, um, I know, I, I do know quite a bit about your history. I actually helped my partner write a research paper about you um, back in his undergrad, which is funny. And now we're communicating all this. So I do know, I do know quite a bit about your background, but I will just ask maybe um, coming from, I also, uh, I used to be an actor. So I think we come from like similar, similar worlds of the other side of the entertainment world and then moving over to behind the camera. Um, so what is it that made you fall in love with photography? And uh, when was maybe the moment that that became it for you and not just uh, a passion? If that's not too uh, lofty of a question. <laughs> um, no, I mean, it's, it's pretty simple. It was, um, it was a pretty immediate epiphany that I had when I was about 28 years old. I got a I got a camera. I, yeah, like you, like you said, I was working in front of the camera. I was, you know, model. Well, you know, trying to anyway, model slash waiter slash whatever I can do to make a living. And you know, my heart, my heart wasn't really in any of it. Um, and then I got a camera. Like I literally got a camera as a gift um, for for Christmas from a, a really good friend of mine. Because um, as a model, I was traveling a lot, and I wasn't really documenting any of my travels. He's like, hey, dude, you're going to all these amazing places. You really should document like this incredible journey that you're having. So I'm like, yeah, okay, whatever. So he got me this camera and, um, and I don't know, like literally I, which is funny because I was, I was working with photographers and all the time and I, I couldn't have been less interested. Usually when people are interested in photography, you know, like if I'm working with a model and they're interested in pursuing photography, they're very inquisitive and, and I, I couldn't be furthest from, from that when I was, when I was modeling. So, and I worked with some pretty great photographers and I could have gotten some really you know, incredible knowledge um, had I had the foresight to ask a few questions, but, you know, it, you know, fortunately it panned out anyway. Yeah. <laughs> but yeah, so I got this camera when I was 28 and I just, I, I became consumed and, and in hindsight, I, I, I realized that it became, that, that it was, um, you know, it, it became like a, a mode of communication for me. Like it was a, a way of me communicating stuff that I couldn't articulate verbally or in any other way. Um, and yeah, I just, I was shooting, I just got that camera and I was shooting like seven days a week and I would shoot anything in sight. And it, it was, it was, it was pretty obsessive. I mean, people were worried about me because I was literally like holed up in my apartment, like setting up these little like tabletop scenarios with Barbies and lighting and like, yeah, and I did it like round the clock, and uh, and then I started, you know, exploring uh, shooting with people, and um, and that's you know that kind of stuck, and and it was just it was just my obsession and my my need to communicate certain things that that kind of sort of led me. I mean, it, it it literally led me. I wasn't, you know, it wasn't even a conscious decision. Like, oh, okay, I think I'm gonna be a photographer. <laughs> It just, it took me over. 
I love it. I think, and I, I mean, I consider you more than just a photographer. I consider you really an artist, and so because you you do play with so many different mediums within your photography work, from set design to body paint to everything, like working with so many different people and like going across so many different variables. Music, even music videos. Like I also am somebody who does a whole bunch of different things. So you've been a huge inspiration in that respect. So I mean, very much appreciate all the work that you you've done and that you do. Um, and yeah, I'm, w one thing I'd love to touch on in that kind of respect, in terms of y your journey from photography to maybe where you're at now, where you've done so many different things. Um, also, um, maybe touching on another career of somebody that I think we both admire very much, uh, David LaChapelle, um, kind of working through the process of going from commercial photographer to somebody that's also considered a fine art photographer, because I think your work has very much gone from being very commercial to now obviously being um, put in all different outlets for magazine covers to fine art contexts. Um, how has that process been for you? Do you enjoy exhibiting? I know especially this is kind of moving in the NFT direction um, before we talk about digital art. I mean, how has the shift from commercial photography to the art world <clears throat> maybe just in of itself been for you? <clears throat> Sorry, <laughs> got something stuck in my throat. I mean, it, it wasn't really a shift. I've always, I've always done it. I mean, I've always either tried to integrate it into my commercial work, you know, like sort of a fine art um, approach to, to commercial work, you know, wherever I, you know, whenever they would let me, <laughs> which was very rarely, but um, I would, I would sure would, <laughs> yeah. Um, but, um, but yeah, like I've always like, you know, I actually started doing, I mean, if I, you know, if I look back again, like, you know, I, it was, it was more sort of like a, an organic sort of like unveiling of, of like what I wanted to do and what I needed to say. And um, so I kind of always did like everything. I, I always did, you know, side projects and personal projects that just kind of, were completely self-indulgent and, uh, you know, just, just were satisfying my creative, you know, my creative fantasies. Um, and, and fortunately, a lot of that stuff really resonated with my commercial clients. You know, they, they, they saw some, you know, some ability in me that I could, you know, do pretty much anything. Um, and I did, I, I did like, I did, I did such a wide range of things that like people either fo focus on fashion or entertainment or, or beauty or, you know, but like I, I did everything. I mean, like everything. And, um, um, yeah, so in answer to your question, I, I kind of always did everything simultaneously. So I never, I never made it like a conscious shift from one to the other, you know, it's all sort of like blends into each other and. You know, and obviously sometimes, you know, like I just have to like put on my commercial hat and just say, okay, I'm just shooting like straight up, you know, on a white background, just really beautiful, simple, you know, cosmetic advertising kind of thing. Um, yeah. So, I mean, I don't know if that answers your question, but yeah, totally. Yeah, I, I don't really, it's funny. I don't really do anything consciously. <laughs> I'm led by my subconscious for most of my creative decision making. I love it. And I mean, that, that's also why I kind of consider you more of more of an artist than just a, like, I mean, I don't want to say just a photographer, but I mean, I feel like that's the main thing you've labeled yourself. And I feel like maybe people take, I definitely take too much time trying to consider what to label myself. And I think the most free I've been is when I don't really consider what I'm calling myself. Um, both in terms of everything and gender and all of that, but also in terms of my career. Yeah. Um, but yeah, no, I really I had a conversation it. yesterday about, about like gender and art and how they converge and and being put in a box and being labeled right. and yeah like I, I'm I, I don't I don't have a while <laughs> I, I, don't like, I don't like being pigeonholed in, in any way so Absolutely. Um, yeah so that, that that of course applies to you know to photography and and anything yeah. creative really and speaking of not being pigeonholed and moving into new worlds uh obviously the direction you knew we were going to go in eventually um i would love to hear your thoughts about you know maybe even just your preliminary thoughts on and on nfts and maybe i'll touch on just one aspect of them that i'd really be interested to hear your thoughts on um as somebody who's done so much exhibiting and has so much work um both in terms of like commercial work and with copyright and i'm sure you've had a lot of ip conversations and all of this um nfts for their ability to have a smart contract that is essentially um, the provenance of the piece integrated digitally into the piece. I feel like that's one of the most exciting things for artists because it kind of just nullifies all those crazy contracts and pages and, and stamps and things you have to give collectors and all of that. Um, with that in mind, um, what is maybe attractive to you about NFTs? How do you maybe see 
um, uh, maybe with our first conversation in mind, or even you can ask a question, however you want to go about this. Um, but what are your initial thoughts um, on NFTs and how they might be able to serve you and your work? Um, that's, a, that's a really good question. I'm still, I mean, I've, I've, you've been really great at explaining to me the, you know, the, the, the you know, the concept and the context and everything of, of how NFTs are positioned. And um, I, I mean, I, I just, you know, like I've, I've always been about like, just kind of, you know, like I, I'm not one, I'm not one to like, hold on to like, you know, like when, for example, like, like a lot of photographers didn't embrace the digital age and you know, they're like, oh, you know, that's, you know, like they felt it was Some somehow are still film, right? Some, a lot are still shooting films. So, hey. <laughs> yeah, well, it's, there's a, film's making a comeback. There's a lot of young people who are like actually shooting film, but, but, um, you know, like I've always been one to embrace like, like new things and new technology and, and ways to showcase art specifically in, in various forms, um, technologically. And you know that's that's kind of what it's, what's appealing to me is just like it's it's just like a you know a brand new world of of exhibiting and 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 you know I mean I I get the sense that it, it's it's going to simplify the whole process of of like you know art exchanging hands so that's you know that's something else that's appealing to me because you're right you know a lot of a lot of the a lot of the hassle that's involved in in you know, like providing certif cert you know, certification for art and stuff is, I think this will simplify that. So um, I mean, I'm, I'm, just, I'm just like excited at the prospect of, of like embrace, of embracing a new, a new way to, to exhibit art and to, you know, and to bring it to like a different generation. Cause um, I think, you know, right now the NFTs are like on fire and I'm sure they're going to become, um, you know, common, like not common, but they're going to become, sort of like mainstream um you know relatively soon um so you know i just want to i want to be a part of that i don't want to be left behind in the dust like i was with bitcoin <laughs> <laughs> no absolutely and i mean i feel like the fact that you're already like I, I always say, even if you're talking about it now you're still an early adopter because it hasn't been adopted on a complete mass scale yet and it's almost i, I don't want to say responsibility but it's almost uh it's almost why, like, why would we not take advantage of being at this point in this time and at least try it out since the upstart cost is still fairly low, which is, uh, and, and it will continue to go down as well, which is the good news. But yeah, I mean, that's perfect. Um, thank you. With that in mind, I would just love to, I mean, I know that I know that I was probably one of your first starting points, but just, just out of curiosity and also maybe for people uh, listening or, or reading, um, I would love to hear like, what was your first entry point uh, into the hearing about NFTs? Like, do you remember the first time you heard about it? Was, was it SNL? Was it an article? Was it a conversation? Um, do you remember the first time you maybe heard that come up and we're like, wait, what, what is that? <laughs> Yeah, actually, I have um, I have um, you know, I, I have assistants like all over the place, and I, I shoot a lot. I live in Central New Jersey, and I have a, an assistant down here who helps me out. And she's um, she's a young girl. She's seventeen, and she's super like smart and savvy and knowledgeable about like everything. And she was talking to me. She was showing me, um, she's like, oh, check out these NFTs, and like I was like, oh, I don't, what is you know, like I. <laughs> I was like, I was nodding and smiling and, you know, it didn't really register. It actually didn't really register what she was telling me until, until I spoke to you. And then she, and then I went back to her and I'm like, and then she knew like all about it. She knows all about it. I love it. So I was like really kind of like um, tapping her for, you know, for more um, of her understanding because, you know, the kids pick up on it quicker than us old folks. So she was, um, she was very savvy. They're making like TikToks about it. It's amazing. Like I'll even learn yeah. things sometimes like that I'll just see online. I'll be like, oh, wow. That's like a really good simplification of a very complex idea. That's impressive. <laughs> like, <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So, um, you know, thank goodness for the younger generation and for, you know, for people like you and her, um, you know, who sort of helped walk me through stuff like that. So, yeah. So, I mean, I, I have a pretty good understanding of it, but, but yeah, she she basically introduced it to my subconscious. I didn't didn't really register until again until I spoke to you and and then I started and then of sort and then of course once I spoke to you like and, and NFTs were ubiquitous. They were like you know everyone was doing them like or everyone was talking about them and you know Jay Z's pumping tens of millions of dollars into this and that and, you know so like it's it's you know it's you know be, my awareness has certainly um, opened up since since you know we had our initial conversation. That's awesome. No, I'm really excited to hear that. Um, and 
with that in mind, maybe there's two kind of worlds that I would love to hear your thoughts um, about in regards to NFTs and maybe the relationship between. Um, the first would obviously being, obviously given your experience, um, be the world of photography. I know we've also talked about this a little bit, um, but maybe just a little bit more on the record. Um, how do you see photography changing or uh, being transformed with NFTs? Do you think it'll help maybe make it may, an, be another layer of legitimacy integrating photography into the art world? Do you think that it'll help photographers sell their work? Um, I know that there's, as photographers, we've been quite lucky that we have organizations like, you know, Getty and stock photography sites, and also a lot of, you know, magazines and outlets that are willing to share our work. Um, but in terms of the artists actually getting paid directly, um, I think NFTs might be a new opportunity. So I would love to get your thoughts on uh, NFTs and photography specifically, uh, if you have any. Well, I mean, the way the way I'm trying to wrap my, my head around, like how, why this would be a viable thing for photographers is, is I kind of equated to early social media where, you know, a few people were savvy enough to, to sort of like get things going before they changed all the algorithms and, you know, and then they spun it into massive careers. And I think there's a few people who are young photographers who may not have had the opportunity otherwise, who are savvy technologically, who are able to spin NFTs into their own thing, you know, so they're, I mean, I don't want to, I don't want to, I don't want to oversimplify by saying like I'm equating it to influencers, but but you know, I feel like it's going to create a whole. Yeah, I feel like it's going to create a whole other community of photographers who may or may not have had the opportunity to showcase their work, or certainly make money, or certainly make millions of dollars. Right. You know, so like it to to me, it's just kind of like another another entry point for for people um, who. You know, like I, you know, when I started photography, there was a simple formula that was in place for a hundred years. You did A, B, and C, and you the outcome was D. Always, like there was no string. Or if it. you can work with this magazine, you can get to in front of this editor or whatever. Oh, yeah. yeah, exactly. You start here. You start here. It's a political. You start shooting for Condé Nast. You start, and then you start shooting the big campaign, and then you're Stephen Mizell. <laughs> That's how it played out. Always, you know. Um, but with, with NFTs, I just think it's, you know, I mean, it's just like another, it's another opportunity for, for people who, who don't, you know, cause, cause that's not the process anymore. Right. Like, like e even for me, like once social media sort of took over, I, I literally had to start over, you know, I had a good thing going, you know, and then social media kicked in and, and it's, it was all wiped clean. Like literally like my whole career was wiped clean because there was a whole new, um, entry point sure. yeah no for sure yeah yeah there's a whole entry point for photography and 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 people were just like you know coming in fast and furious and leaving all of us you know old schoolers in the dust um so i that you know i was quick to embrace social media too so like fortunately i wasn't lagging too far behind in that area but but uh, which is why i want to do nfts because i, I kind of want to get in you know with the cool kids who are like you know that that cool kid you know that cool set of, of people who are technologically savvy who are going to be able to spin like very illustrious careers out of nfts where again is they probably may not have had the opportunity you know they may never you know they live somewhere remote and they don't have access to the editors and to the you know and to the people that you know to to, to the talent that they need to work with in order to file you know follow the traditional trajectory of, you know, a professional photographer. So, you know, it's just like, uh, you know, people could literally be creating art in their basement in, you know, in North Dakota and become like a, you know, like a major competitive artist, you know, like a world-class artist. Yeah, Beeple, Beeple, the number one artist in the space lives in South Carolina in a very modest home with his like wife and kids, like a very like under understated guy. And then just all of a sudden sells pieces for tens or hundreds of millions of dollars. It's really crazy. It's amazing. Um, yeah, and I, exactly. I, think you touched on, I think you touched on a really strong point with this like new era of like of cool kids of social media. Like it's the next it's the next one. Um, actually, one of the articles we're doing in this publication is based around Clubhouse. Um, like the app, because that's been a huge uh, gathering point of a lot of the information around NFTs. If you are you on Clubhouse yet? If not, I, I, I'm sending yeah. you. I'd, I'll, yeah. I'll, I'll maybe let you know rooms and things. It's it's I, I'm loving it. Um, I've been on it for the past <laughs> few months. Um, and we're doing an article about Clubhouse, um, which is actually a bit of a mimic of a, an article that Andy Warhol did in Interview Magazine in the '60s, 
about Studio 54 and the cool club kids who came out into the club. Um, but now it's Clubhouse and these leaders in the NFT space who are actually the ones who are the influencers or like the cool kids of this space. Mm -hmm. So I think that's that's an awesome parallel that I'm glad you made um, because we're 100% on the same page uh, with that. So I love it. And that's actually a perfect segue into the next part of the conversation that I wanted to bring up. Um, also, given your background, um, both in terms of the world of the arts and also the queer community, also near New York, I know you've had a lot of um, experience seeing how things have changed over the past uh, little while, especially in terms of the artistic community. I would love to hear your thoughts on um, how NFTs might uh, serve the queer community specifically. I know there's a few conversations that we've had in terms of accessibility um, to both buyers and exhibition space, because you know, obviously there's a barrier to entry for a lot of people uh, in terms of being able to exhibit in traditional spaces. So that's been a big conversation around this maybe being able to change that. But then also I would love to hear your thoughts on the other side of things, being somebody who's worked with such large, uh, you know, people in the industry, RuPaul, et cetera. Um, how do you maybe see um, this world integrating with that world? And uh, do you see that? Um, have you heard of any conversations? I'd just be curious uh, to know coming from, uh, you know, your, the, your point of view. <laughs> you know, honestly, like I, I just, you know, like I, I just, you know, I mean, I'm, I'm, clearly you know queer and, and, and present and and visible in the community but like i've 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 kind of kind of in different headspace right now like it's sort of a non-issue so to me just just moving forward as an artist will by, by virtue of doing that will elevate the queer community you know what I'm, like I'm, I'm saying other queer artists and stuff i don't i don't know that you know, I mean, you know, like the younger generation, I, I don't know that it's, I, I don't know, I may, I may be wrong or naive, but I, I just don't feel it's the same conversation we were having when we were kids, you know, like it, like, you know, like we were fighting for our lives, basically, you know, today it's like, you know, I mean, if the conversation is like how we can incorporate NFTs into the queer, you know, queer into queer culture, then, you know, we've, you know, I've, our generation's done our job, so. Um, <laughs> So yeah, so I, I think I think by virtue of just of just proceeding as an artist, um, will you know will sort of like elevate the queer you know the queer experience. I mean, I, I, do, you, do you know what I'm trying to say? I don't. Yeah. I don't. I don't think. I don't. Personally, I don't feel like I need to like focus my energy on the queer community. I'm queer. Everyone knows it. I'm visible as a, as, as you know, as a gay man. So just doing my thing, I, I almost feel like making it a non-issue, you know, like, I, I don't know. I, I'm, I'm sort of like kind of all over the place on this, but, but I mean, my hope is that, is that it does give opportunities to people again, who may not have had opportunities otherwise. No, totally. um, and, and if that means the queer community, then, you know, by, by all means, more power to 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 all of us. No, absolutely. I mean, I totally know. I totally know what you mean um, as well. I'm just. I feel like I'm coming from a point of both thinking about, um, like, I'm living in Italy right now, which is a little bit more of a you know homophobic country, um, and that as well as you know a lot of the you know like trans artists and people who don't have so many opportunities. But I mean, at the end of the day, what you just said is is the number one thing, which is representation. Just being a strong queer voice in the world creating art and, you know, killing it is the best thing that we can do. And I'm of the exact same mindset. And that's what I try to do, uh, you know, every day. If I, if I don't have time to, I'll try to donate here and there, do this and that. But if I, you know, the main thing that you can do is just be excellent and yeah. work hard, right? right. So I totally agree with yeah. you. Yeah. And I, I didn't mean to sound like in, in different no, words. I'm, I'm, you know, I, I do all of that too. Like I support, you know, feverishly, you know, like, I know. <laughs> I, I know. <laughs> yeah. Under underdogs, you know, um, all, all over. So that's that's, you know. But I found I found that just being being you know just living my life is the best representation. Um, I personally I don't feel the need to to be aggressively advocating because. Because I'm just the big like out and about homo, and everybody knows <laughs> you already do. <laughs> you know, like like I think I think just doing that is doing that. You know, like 
I, I just feel, I just don't want to, you know, I wouldn't want anyone to dilute, to dilute their experience by always having that nagging thing in the back of their head, like, oh, it's got to be queer. It's got to be queer. You know, just do your, do your art, love your art and love, like, what, love what you have to say. And if that is queer centric, then, then there you go. Then that's, you know, two birds with one stone. But, um, you know, I just, I just think like everyone just needs to like live their life and not, and, and that's the best representation. And that's the best way to move things forward. No, I think that's that's a very strong statement. I think that's uh, people, everybody should listen to that because I think a lot of people, especially right now, are taking a lot of time out of their lives and, and are causing themselves a lot of stress um, about things that maybe they don't have control over. I don't know. Uh, maybe not to undersell it or, or you know oversimplify it as well, but I, I, I do agree with you. Um, yeah, no, I just was interested in your perspective in terms of that, because that has been kind of like the way the conversation has been moving. Um, a lot of communities have tried to like, you know, make NFTs for their communities specifically. But I think at the same time, it's really just the same conversation. It's okay, how can we harness this technology to do the same things we've been doing, uh, you know, for charities, for our own work, for right. promoting our own work. So it's, it's really, I think, just no difference than no different than- You're right, exactly. And, and you know, yeah. correlates, you know, it correlates to like social media, you know, like first social media was just a, you know, a way to connect with people, but it became all of those things. It became a way to communicate like politically communicate ideas, you know, like help people help, you know, like I, I use social media to help save animals who are in, in peril of being euthanized in shelters and, you know, and, 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 you know, it's become a very effective tool for a number of, of philanthropic things as well as creative things. Um, and, you know, I just feel like NFTs will, you know, can care, continue carrying the torch of that. You are the best interviewee ever. I mean, I know you've done this before, but <laughs> uh, you just segued perfectly into our next point, which I wanted to touch on. Um, being somebody who is such a voice in philanthropy as well, with bullies and biceps and all of the different things you do across different, you know, parallels. Um, how do you see maybe NFTs being a means to promote charitable work, charitable work being a decentralized source of finance um, and a way for people to fundraise internationally? Um, I'd be curious, being somebody, you know, your philanthropic background, uh, you know, perfect segue, exactly. <laughs> you just gave me a really good idea, actually. I just had a, a little bit of an epiphany. I have, um, I have an online retailer now that, you know, we sell like mass market things, like with images of mine on them, like t-shirts and coffee cups and stuff. And, you know, we could, we, you know, we could potentially do, you know, sell like sort of mass market type of NFTs that proceeds would go to charity, you know, like not, not yeah. like, you know, a million dollar, you know, I mean, just Absolutely. stuff that like, that everyone can have, you know, like bucks, hundred bucks, whatever. Yeah. Yeah. You know, like something that every, every, everybody can have and they feel, you know, they, they have a, you know, a part, they have own a part of the future and, and, um, and they're helping. So, um, you know, that might be another, like, a uh, an additional thing to add to my little until online retailer type thing. And, you know, cause the on online retailer that I have, the proceeds go to the Ali Fournay center and to stand up for pits. Yeah. We, you know, with the pandemic, you know, sales have been kind of not great, but, but we're, we're, we're gearing up to like do another big push and, you know, maybe NFTs is a way to sort of bring it into the future. That's actually really admirable. You, you, I mean, I mean, I know you've been in the industry forever, so you know how people are. But most people who have their merch line do not donate their merch sales to charity. So that's just admirable in and of itself. Well, yeah. I love that. <laughs> you know, they're like, I know I need that $190. It's like, really? Okay. Okay. <laughs> Whatever. Sure. And I do their sites for them. So I'm like, okay, that's fine. <laughs> I mean, I was I was almost going to start an OnlyFans page and donate it all to charity. That's, so, that's like, awesome. <laughs> but maybe NFTs is, um, you know. Hey, they're gonna they're gonna release an adult NFT platform eventually. I'm just waiting for it. Whenever it does, it's gonna be worth so much money. I don't know. <laughs> it's just inevitable. Yeah, that's actually that's another really good idea. <laughs> you know, I mean, it's so prevalent. Um, let's find, know, let's find a coder. We you know, we can start it tomorrow. <laughs> <laughs> okay, I'll, I'll get on that. <laughs> <laughs> no, I'm kidding. I'm kidding. Uh, no, that's awesome. Uh, no, I, I'm happy that I, I always love when questions turn into into ideas. So I'm, I'm very happy to spark that. Um, I'm just going to wrap up the interview portion of this, and then we can 
uh, you know, get into whatever you want to talk about. I also saw your images and I'm obsessed and I want to, you know, discuss that as well. But just the last question. So I very much appreciate you taking the time to answer all these questions, have this conversation with us. You're lovely. I love talking to you as well. Um, and uh, the last question I have would be, given this constantly evolving space, um, and the fact that you're already exploring this new technology. Um, I'm asking everybody that we're talking to within this publication, um, what do you see as next? Is this what's next for you? Have you seen any technology that you're really excited about, whether it be like virtual reality, artificial reality, like those uh, AR filters, like Snapchat filters? Um, is it, you know, um, integrate like metaverses and online spaces, uh, digital spaces coming into physicality? Is there any like, um, trend that you've been really attracted to that you want to touch on next, just out of curiosity? Um, from a creative standpoint, I'm, I mean, I'm really, I'm really interested. And it's funny, somebody just reached out to me who does um, post-production on, on huge sci-fi projects. Like, um, you know, they've done work on Star Wars. And, you know, so like creatively, I, I kind of want to integrate photography and just like 3D but like really sophisticated. I mean, I've done a lot of like, you know, dropping back. I mean, I have really good um, digital artists that I work with who, you know, who can do like a variety of things. And I collaborate with a lot, a lot of different artists where they I, I put like literal art on images, um, you know, painterly things. And then, and then I have people who drop like very realistic backgrounds, but kind of want, I'm kind of wanting to explore sort of more like 3D, 3D two-dimensional, you know, like images, but like in a, in a 3D space, like create in complete environments. Um, and I'm talking to this guy who's, you know, who does very, very sophisticated uh, stuff like that. I mean, he's created, you know, complete environments for huge films. So we're gonna, you know, we're gonna, we're gonna sort of like explore how we can create, you know, like I have a couple of celebrity shoots that I was just going to shoot on location and stuff. I'm like, hmm, maybe we can create like this whole other world um, that doesn't exist, um, you know, and have, you know, have this, you know, have, the, have this be like a, a, you know, like the next level of, of imagery for, for me. I mean, I, I wouldn't want to do it exclusively, but it's just something that I would like to explore. Totally. And I mean, why not? Right. And I mean, you're somebody who likes to play across different mediums and try new things. So, I mean, I'm, it's funny that you mentioned that I'm, I'm literally working on something very similar right now with a 3d artist. And it's one of my first times doing that with photography. I've done it with video before, but it's super cool. The fact that I can be like, okay, I just want to shoot this, you know, like still life. And then you can take that and just put it in anything com almost completely photorealistically. It's really cool. Yeah. It just gives you, as like a, from a creative direction standpoint, it gives you a whole just like endless possibilities, which is really fun. Like nothing's off yeah. the table. So. Yeah, I mean, like a lot of my stuff is is um, not not escapism. I mean, I'm not looking to escape with stuff, but I'm I mean, I'm looking to larger create, than life, uh, I would say for sure though. I, that's why I'm a fan of yours. You know, I love I love a uh, maximalist or extreme things you wouldn't see walking down the street necessarily, or if you do, you would point and stare like. <laughs> Yeah, I mean, I just, I'm just, you know, like, I'm always interested in, like, creating, like, like, better versions of reality. Totally. Um, yeah, because all it optimism, I love it. <laughs> yeah. yeah, so, um, so that's, you know, that's, that's something I'm, I'm looking to do. Um, you know, from a personal standpoint, I mean, I'm, I, I love the idea of, of uploading your consciousness <laughs> into, you know, into the, the best cloud. Effect concept. Amazing. I love that you brought that up. <laughs> Neuralink. Yeah, it's happen. Just, yeah. You know, like, yeah, I'm, I'm interested in like seeing how that, you know, I'm also interested in, in, in integrating like technology into the human body, um, you know, where you can control things just by thought. Um, and, and, you know, like you can call, call somebody on your hand, you know, like in total recall. Totally. <laughs> um, so like, I love, I love stuff like, I love stuff like that or anything, you know, like robotic or, you know, in, like he, bionic integrating, like, you know, technology into you'd be biology. In. If they, if they yeah. said you could be a cyborg tomorrow, you'd be down. <laughs> yeah. You know, like I totally, <laughs> I'd, I'd totally like build an exoskeleton and you know <laughs> absolutely I, I actually i'll send you one link if you're interested um one of the resources that's uh my favorite at the moment uh and i'm actually invested in it but it's that's besides the point um it's called decentraland it's the largest online metaverse um but essentially it's just like a gamified version of like a browser like google 
And if you go to the welcome plaza, you can walk through different buildings and it'll explain the whole system to you, like how it works. Um, and it's not a game. I think like think of each building as a website. So it's really an interesting thought. And like that would be the kind of world you would live in if you were to upload your consciousness post-mortem to that cloud. So it's like just to see as a concept, like it's, it's really crazy, but uh, it's pretty, it's almost realistic. And I don't know, it looks really good. I'm very impressed with that one specifically. So I'll send it to you, Decent Decentraland. It's very cool. And also you can, uh, you can exhibit art in there and you can go walk through an art gallery and even include oh. like, a, like a sound aspect. Like I've go I went through one and the artist did a voiceover explaining each piece. It was really cool. Um, yeah, I'll send it. That's very amazing. Yeah, send me that. On the kind of next step. But yeah, just just to wrap up, this interview was, I mean, more than I even expected. But I appreciate you, of course. This this conversation was great.